So let's consider taboos in science. I'll propose that there are three kinds of scientific taboos. I call them transitory taboos, stubborn taboos, and double secret super taboos. Or for short, I'll just call it the woo-woo taboo. <laughs> transitory taboos include stem cell research based on cells taken from human embryos. You get in trouble if you talk too much about this. Or human cloning, or the plan B conception contraception pill, or discussions about intelligent design. Other taboos include the poo taboo, which refers to inhibitions about discussing what to do with human waste. It turns out that around the world, about one billion people use flush toilets that are connected to sewage systems, which keep the, the water system pure. But 2.8 billion people use pit toilets, and 2.4 billion people don't even have pits. So this is a real global sanitation crisis, as much of a crisis as practically any of the other crises you can imagine, that nobody wants to talk about. How often do you hear this, this story being reported? Till I looked at this, I hadn't even thought of it. But the poo taboo is a, is a real problem. Another scientific taboo. There are many such taboos. It's impossible to seriously discuss, at least in public, the possibility that there are any real differences between the races or the genders. For example, the president of Harvard University, Larry Summers, was forced to resign earlier this year after suggesting that women were underrepresented in science engineering because of differences in intrinsic aptitude. That was unacceptable to say. Even though people will talk about it in private, you can't say it in public. Another taboo is that it's virtually impossible to question the causal relationship between HIV and AIDS without being ridiculed or dismissed as a crackpot. The fact is there are some scientists with good credentials who do doubt the standard story about the HIV-AIDS relationship, but you're not likely to hear much about it uh, in the scientific literature. It's considered at this point a kind of a dogma and a, and a taboo. Well, why do I call these transitory debu taboos? The answer is because these are controversies that won't last forever. Consider, for example, in vitro fertilization or organ transplants or vaccinations. At one time, these were considered extremely controversial to the point of being tab such a taboo that many scientists would not talk about it in public for fear of lo losing their job. Or consider, in earlier times, the use of limes to prevent scurvy among British sailors or the practice of washing one's hands before surgery or assisting in childbirth. These two were considered laughable by some and were ridiculed by most at the time. But the controversies eventually passed away and the taboos also dissolved along with them.